Hey everyone, welcome back to Berlin Noir. Today we're going to be continuing where we were in the previous episode, building right next to that, and working on the Neue Welt, or the New World as it is in English. Here is a picture of it back in, actually, the 1880s. Uh, I couldn't really find anything more modern, at least I should say modern, to the uh, this time period in the 1920s. Um, but basically this is, uh, I guess it served as... Uh, various things throughout its history, but it was a uh, beer palace, amusement park, uh, political meeting area, uh, theaters, it even served as a military hospital during the First World War. Um, but for our purpose here in the 1920s, I believe it was mostly just a beer hall and theater, concert hall, and of course still four political meetings. Uh, but the coolest of those is Beer Palace. Uh, it sounds pretty neat, so I uh, went with that for the title. But yeah, it was an interesting area, and uh, I've had it on my radar for a little while now. Uh, just wasn't quite sure how I was going around and actually building it, because I wasn't sure what assets I was used, or what assets I was going to use, I should say. Uh, so basically, because the main building there, one that I placed down at the very start, and then this is what I'm working on now, um, this is actually, as you can see, a train station that I uh, converted to procedural objects and then using the color rectangles, as they're called in the mod, you can uh, just place a color rectangle literally over any part of the assets and uh, adjust the color of the roof, the walls, whatever, the windows, whatever you want to do. And uh, I was going for a reddish, you know, just your typical reddish orangish uh, roof uh, that's pretty common in here and is the actual color of the building that I'm trying to replicate here um, but it actually turned out pretty well I was searching for a while of something to use here since I didn't really have anything in mind um, the main building that I plopped again at the very start it works there it's uh, I believe it's a market hall so it you know serves a similar function looks similar in size and shape uh, so that was, you know, pretty much the closest I was going to get there. But this front building was pretty important because I wanted to replicate it, uh, at least the entrance, the main entrance here in the front, you know, pretty closely. And uh, here's a picture, you know, now that I've adjusted this building with procedural objects, uh, here's a picture that I found. Uh, and it, this part actually still pretty much looks the same as it uh, back then and today. Uh, so not a whole lot has changed. One really interesting thing, though, is... There's a few variations of this picture here. Uh, I just went with this one because this is the very first one I saw, so I downloaded it. Um, but other pictures I saw all had the flag of the German Empire, uh, whereas that one is completely identical in every way. Uh, people, everything in the exact same place, but that one apparently had no flags, uh, which is interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure <laughs> for that reason. Uh, but obviously that must be... Uh, you know, pre-World War One or during the war. Um, but that's, again, the closest I could find to really any picture of this place during the 20s. I'm not really sure why, but I couldn't really find any pictures of this during the time period, which is interesting. But, yeah, so all things considered, again, I, I'm pretty happy with how this entrance area turned out, uh, especially this building in the front. Uh, really, the only thing that I'm... A little iffy on, I guess, is just purely the color of the roof. Now, uh, whenever it comes to using procedural objects and those color rectangles to adjust the co roof colors, which is pretty much what I use it for exclusively, it's, uh, I don't know, it's hard to get the exact color that you're looking for. Um, I'm, I'm always kind of tinkering with it and trying different colors, slight variations. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I stuck with this color for the roof. Um, so I don't know if you have any suggestions on if I should change it or, you know, make it lighter, darker, or adjust the color slightly more red, more orange, whatever. Uh, let me know, because again, I am always uh, tinkering with them, trying to get the rec correct color. Um, but yeah, even so, I think it turned out pretty cool and uh, definitely captures the entrance and just that general vibe. Uh, pretty much as closely as I could possibly uh, uh, replicate it, so I'm pretty happy with it. But um, so here I'm using for like I'm pretty sure the first time in this entire series uh, these fences and uh, 
or walls or whatever, I guess, half wall, half fence. Um, but, you know, I always use networked walls and fences since they are, of course, very easy to use and it doesn't really matter how long they are. Uh, you'll always be able to fin them in there. Uh, of course, with these, you know, they are, you know, it's a little harder to get whatever size you want. So I was really fortunate and pretty lucky that basically this fits in perfectly without having to adjust it really at all. Uh, really, the only exception was that thing at the very far left where I tried to convert them to procedural objects to. Uh, try and shrink them down a bit or just you know edit them whatever and uh, apparently these these assets can't actually be converted to procedural objects so uh, not a big deal though obviously because it uh, turned out perfectly fine there but uh, yeah I wanted to make it a little more grand the entrance and with that one picture I showed a little bit ago with the uh, front of this uh, the front entrance here it had these types of fences uh, this, this type of wall so it made sense to do it I figured it'd take a little bit more time to uh, do that and uh, add these nicer walls and uh, you know the fences and the gates and stuff I liked how it turned out I decided to leave this one cracked open just as it was actually in the picture and uh, yeah it was it was definitely a nice change because again I, I really like the network ones I think anyone does prefer those over the props just because it takes so much more time with the props um, but it's I don't know after doing this maybe I'll use these a little more often uh, it, you know still sparingly because it does like I said take a decent amount more time but it's definitely worth uh, taking a little more time occasionally uh, just to kind of break up the monotony of basically the two or three fences that I use across the entire city but yeah so for the detailing up here uh, at the front um, I just decided to add some flowers here since that's uh, you know seemed perfect for here just that tiny little sliver of grass uh, that was on the one side of the, the uh, wall here so just adding that definitely uh, makes it look a little nicer and then for the paths here I wanted to make it a little you know kind of a little more interesting Right, not not too uh, straight, not too grid-like, trying to make some curves and bends and such. And uh, I think it turned out pretty interesting. It's definitely uh, not boring, I guess, uh, by the look of it. But, yeah, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do kind of in the grass area towards the bottom of the screen. So those two grass segments on both sides of that path going up to the main entrance, um, I wasn't quite sure. If I should, you know, because in, in the aerial, aerial view, which I actually didn't include the aerial view up to this point or even this entire episode, just because it was, I don't know, it was really difficult to make out exactly what was going on. Literally, the only thing you could see were like a million chairs and tables sitting out on the pavement, um, which isn't super interesting. The buildings and trees just kind of blend in together. It's not a, apparent to many of the photos and parts of the city on the aerial view. This one was uh, one of the more subpar ones, I guess. Um, so yeah, but I couldn't really, again, make out exactly what was going on. And uh, even in the front, it just looked to be grass, but I decided to, uh, I think I end up adding some benches later on. I'm not sure if that's now or if I revisit it. Um, I do kind of hop around a bit because it's, uh, it's, not, it's, a, it's not a small area, but it's, uh, it is smaller, I guess, compared to uh, some things I typically build, and it's pretty narrow. Uh, so, uh, real in real life, between this building here and the buildings on the left, uh, there is a lot more space in real life. Uh, but here, it's it's pretty it's pretty squished. So, as you see there, uh, right there, those little open green sp spaces of grass, which I eventually fill in later. But uh, those will all eventually be filled in with tables and chairs. I guess part of the uh, beer hall, uh, beer garden. Um, but, you know, whenever I, I, which actually I think it worked out kind of good, the fact that it was a little more squished than I guess it is in real life. Just because in doing so, it kind of gets rid of that dead space, which would have all been filled in with those tables and chairs. And the one thing that's, you know, I like adding tables and chairs in places where people would gather, of course, because that's realistic. But you're limited on your options of ones that actually draw 
uh, your sims to sit down, right? Um, most of them are just props, so of course if their props are non-functional, people won't come up to them and sit down. Um, but I, I'm, I only have one table that people can actually sit down in, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's very plain, and I don't like using it that much, just because it doesn't really fit in a lot of situations, I feel like. Uh, it's just a very, I think it's just one of the basic vanilla tables. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I don't like using that one that much. So I really wish there were some more detailed tables that actually had people come and sit down. I mean, I, I imagine, I guess I can go to the asset editor and make my own. Uh, I haven't really considered doing that, but I just, I always hate dealing with the asset editor. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's used it with a lot of mods and assets installed. You basically can't use it if you have any sort of mods or assets um, any more than like a hundred or so because uh, it just gets way too slow and it's impossible to use so you have to there's some tricks to get around it or you have to use a another account which just takes time which I could of course use building rather than doing that and it's a little frustrating so things like that in this game kind of kill my uh, creativity and momentum so I just trying to avoid them at all costs basically um, but yeah I don't know, moving on from that, I guess I kind of talked over that little garden there that we were building, kind of like a side entrance it looked like on the aerial view. Just kind of a big piece of grass, and then I just decided to uh, detail it nicely with some flowers and bushes. And uh, I did miss, I, I uh, didn't build it at the time, and I actually didn't build it at all, because at the time I didn't notice it on the aerial view, but there was like a little building uh, right on the other side of that little grass area there that I just built. Um, probably some sort of like kiosk thing for people to come in and I don't know buy tickets for whatever uh, Since I imagine people want to just walk in off the street uh, free of charge. Oh, who knows? Maybe um, since I imagine You know they made the money off the beer selling the beer or of course if you're going to see some sort of concert or something You obviously need a ticket for that um, but yeah, I decided not to include that and some of the smaller buildings in this area just because again It's a little squished Didn't have a whole lot of room and I still wanted to get a good number of these tables in even though They aren't functional and they're just sitting there plainly uh, Unused so it is a little weird especially since I do um, Even though I'm using just pavement networks. I always take invisible paths and draw them over uh, any of those pavement networks, if they're of course paths, uh, that way people can walk through it, walk around. So it does look a little weird having people walking around, no one sitting by. But I guess that again just kind of goes down as one of the quirks of city skylines, right? All those chairs with no people, but oh well, not a whole lot can be done with that. But yeah, so after this, kind of just finishing placing down the chairs, I did cut off cut out some of the detailing, minor detailing, uh, kind of like laying, uh, just placing down uh, different, I guess, small things like lamps and uh, some small uh, planters and such, since uh, I feel like I do that a lot, and I don't know if it gets repetitive or not for you all. I kind of wanted to stick to the more interesting things, and uh, you know, some of the detailing, of course, is important to show. Um, but, you know, I like trying to get to more things since I initially wasn't sure if this was going to kind of be like a two-parter episode Because I actually had enough footage to do that um, But I just decided to cut out some of the minor detailing that's a little more repetitive and get to some of the other buildings uh, in this area So I, I think that turned out uh, good that way But yeah, so again, I do revisit I mentioned I kind of jump around in this episode now we're back to the front. This is the main entrance that we kind of started with. So revisiting this for some detailing. Um, just placing some, you know, these flowers and bushes here, uh, which I like how this turned out, you know, kind of leaving spaces in, in and out uh, in this area, uh, not just completely filling it in. Uh, I do that kind of most of the time, I guess, but realistically, you know, there's usually some spaces, open spaces, um, different stuff like that. So it's a very, very small thing, which is pretty much never noticed. But uh, when building, you know, trying to go for realism, of course, it's, uh, you know, it makes me uh, feel like I'm doing a little better job, I guess. 
Um, but yeah, not a big deal, I guess. But yeah, so here we are to the, I mentioned earlier, these two kind of grass patches here at the entrance, which I consider just kind of leaving open as grass since that one picture I showed at, this, uh, at the beginning with the um, exact same view from the very front, I think just had completely just nothing there, just grass. Um, it was a little smaller area, so that's probably why. <laughs> um, but we have a little bit larger piece of grass here, so I figured I'd throw in some benches here. You know, I guess I was thinking more along the lines that these benches, you know, weren't permanent or anything like that. Maybe they're moved out here for some sort of festival or something like that. Uh, since I uh, do place a few uh, things of beer, some uh, little crates here as well, trying to make it look like they're setting up for something. Uh, again, you know, I'm sure they'd have some beer festivals after all it is Germany. Um, so, yeah, I figured that's what I was going along with and adding some pigeons as well. Uh, I don't know. I've been doing that a little more recently. It's such a small thing that it's pretty much not even noticeable. But I don't know. Again, what, what's, a, what's a city without pigeons, I guess? Um, but, yeah, moving on from that. Um, so here is kind of... So this is where I I would say things get a little interesting, but I don't know, not really. Uh, more interesting in the sense just that I'm not entirely sure what all these buildings are. Uh, so this one I'm pretty much 100% certain that is still a part of, I guess, Neue Welt, just the whole, you know, the beer halls and the concert halls and just this entire area here. There's a building behind this one, though, that I think is separate. Um, so... I don't really show a whole lot of that one. In fact, I'm not even sure if I showed it all since there wasn't really a whole lot done with that one. Um, but with this one here, uh, there I believe there was some sort of kind of small pond slash waterfall in front of it. And uh, I did eventually find a picture, which I guess I can uh, throw it up here uh, if I remember to do so. Um, but I wanted to recreate some sort of water feature in this area. So this was done kind of after I was aware that there was a fairly sizable little pond here, uh, at least much larger than the one I'm doing here. And also, I wasn't, like, the asset I wanted, I had a specific asset in mind that I wanted to use here uh, that had a very similar features to that picture just a second ago, kind of with those little circular arches as the entrances. And I don't know, maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. I looked for that and I could not find it. So I just decided to go with this, uh, I think it's a French market hall or something like that. Again, very generic, could be anything. Uh, so I was fine using this thing. But uh, yeah, I end up using, so for the little waterfall pond thing here, uh, I use those little water jets, which are very cool since they're animated. Um, very, very small thing that you can see up close but it's a cool little feature i like it um but and then i used that one statue it's like a water fountain statue converted it to po just so it would look as though it's coming out of like a little bowl or something like that uh, against the wall here of course so it's not just shooting randomly out of that wall uh, so just trying to add a small thing and it actually makes quite a big difference uh, when you zoom out it's much more noticeable uh, so uh, i'm glad i added that but uh, yeah, just quickly using procedural objects to raise the door entrance there, uh, which worked pretty well, pretty much glitch free, which uh, is always, you know, the thing with procedural objects, which I didn't really get to mention at the very start when we were messing around with that train station asset. Like that one, I was very surprised that it turned out as nice as it did. Like there's hardly any visible glitches. Uh, I mean, there was like basically only two. Uh, one on the roof, which really wasn't even that noticeable. Up close, sure, but from any distance, no. And then one on the wall, which I end up covering with a tree. So I was very surprised by that. And then, you know, that's a very small thing, of course, just raising the door. But you'd be surprised because oftentimes vertices are connected uh, with walls and doors. And it makes doing stuff that seems as though it should be very, very simple and very easy to do. Uh, it makes it either like impossible or just very difficult. So considering I did one fairly difficult PO project there and then that very simple one, I was still, you know, again, kind of surprised that it turned out as easily and glitch-free as it did. 
But so lastly, just to finish up the episode for the last couple minutes, uh, we're going to be filling in kind of this random section here um, that's a little small, kind of sitting at the back corner of this little area. So the one building that I mentioned um, is that one at the right, top right there. Um, it's, again, I'm not, that one I'm not really sure if it's part of Neuwelt or not, or if it's just something nearby, of course, you know, it, yeah, it, again, it doesn't really matter. Um, there was a building that looked kind of similar to that one, which you'll see in the cinematics. Uh, it has a little kind of small clock tower um, on the front left side. Uh, so there is a building there that's not a clock tower, but it is like a small little tower. So it matched enough that I plopped it down there and just kind of called it a day since it didn't seem super important. Uh, I could very be uh, could very well be wrong with that, but yeah, again, it just, just didn't seem very, seem very interesting or anything, so I kind of skipped it. But so for this area here, uh, I just kind of figured it'd be some sort of storage area slash, you know, maybe place for trash and stuff. Um, since I figured they would need supplies and stuff for, uh, you know, beer, food, whatever, all the different activities and events they'd hold here. Perhaps some of that type of stuff would be stored here. And then this more uh, dirtier side was kind of going to be more so for the trash and stuff like that. Uh, stuff that would be, you know, just thrown away after events or whatever. Stuff that's not used or whatever it may be. Um, just trying to add some element that isn't perfect, right? Again, I always say I like adding dirty elements in the city. As much as they aren't the most popular stuff, uh, it certainly brings it to life, makes it more realistic. But uh, anyways, uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I'm not really sure what I want to do in the next episode. I'm considering doing the shooting range uh, in Hasenheide, uh, since I've gotten a little more information from some of you, since I wasn't really quite sure what I was looking at and what it looked like back then, uh, since there was pretty much no pictures of it. Um, but I've gotten a little more information, so I might do that, or, you know, who knows, I might go over to uh, the center of town and upgrade parts of the center of Berlin that need upgrading. Uh, since we definitely have to get around to doing that as well. Um, so I guess, yeah, next episode, I guess, is going to be a surprise uh, for you and for me, because, again, not sure what I'm going to do. So if you have any preferences, what you want to see built, uh, let me know for sure. And uh, if you did enjoy this episode, please give it a thumbs up. That'd be much, much appreciated. And I will see you all next time.